So you're getting the message today? Who said no? Are you deaf? So you're getting it? Yeah, you can have my seat. Right? So this song is all about the things you put in the way of doing what you want to do. It's all about your yeah buts. How many of you have yeah buts? This side, any yeah buts? Yeah, okay, good. So, what stands in the way of the life that you want to live? Apparently Dana stands in all of our ways. <laughs> what stands in the way, oh, how funny. What stands in the way of the life you want to be? In fact, Dana Beyer, yesterday on Facebook, posted this quote. Before I go to that quote, though, I do want to ask you to really ask yourself that question. What does stand in the way of what you think you want to do in your life? Because you all have answers to that. I've had answers to that in the past. And I may have a couple still lingering. I don't know. I'll check in later. This is about you, not me. So... <laughs> It's about all of us, right? So, what do you have still going on that you're still saying is stopping you from living the life you want? What is it? Is it people? Is it money? Is it places? Is it your history? Is it your friends? Is it your family? My mother, my daughter, my mother. What is it? <laughs> really? So what do you have going on that's still stopping you from living the life you want? So this quote that Dana Byer put up was this. Let go of people who dull your shine. That's good, that's good, I'm not even done. So, it's let go of people who dull your shine, poison your spirit, and bring you drama. Love it, wait, better, best line yet. Cancel your subscription to their issues. Now, for me, when I thought about that, you don't really need to cancel your subscription to their issues. Because basically, if someone else's issues are bothering you, now they're your issues. And so really, you have to cancel your subscription to your issues. I remember Dr. Walker always saying, all God's children got issues. <laughs> what issues do you have going on in your life right now? What issues? You know, Patrick, so beautiful, Patrick. I love hearing you speak, and I loved lot, everything you said was so poignant for today. You know, issues happen. Conditions happen. Things happen in our lives. Things come up. People happen in our lives. What we do with them is what the science of mind is all about. How we react to them, how we respond to them, our relationship to everything going on in our lives. That's what science of mind is all about. The talk title today, my talk title today is Letting Go of Your Yeah Butts. And the butt has two T's. Get it? <laughs> Letting go of your yeah butts. Two T's, because if you don't let go of your butts, they will most definitely make an ass out of you in the end. <laughs> Such a wordsmith. I want you to think about that. <laughs> but think about that. If you don't let go of the butts, that you keep coming up with, they do make an ass out of you because you stop doing what you were born here to do, what you were brought here to do. Which brings you to the other question, what were you actually here to, what are you here to do? What do you know you are here to do? Love always. Love always. <laughs> Forgive everything. Remember who you are. And now? Do it now, do it now and then? <laughs> decide on what that is. You gotta know what it is. You gotta decide, what do you want to do? You know, there's all this talk lately in my household about my third act. You know, what's gonna be my third act? Considering, <laughs> considering that if I say the first 30 years took me to a certain place, bless you, Reverend Barbara. First 30 years took me here. The second 30 years to 60, which, which is really swiftly approaching, it will be here momentarily, took me somewhere completely different. When I got through my 30th year, when I hit my 30th year, something happened to me. As it happens, when I turned 30, I was uh, in 42nd Street, 
in Boston. I had just joined the company 42nd Street in Boston. So this is actually the perfect time to introduce two ladies to you um, who are going to be totally mortified. Uh, these are two of the, 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 the lovely ladies who were in 42nd Street with me in Boston. Stand up, let them see you. No, you can stand up. The camera will be great close up. Look at them. Sandy Yarish and Mary Criswall, that's her maiden name, by the way. And when I turned 30, I got to join this company, and I think you were both in it when I joined it, weren't you? Or did you come later? She came later. And it was a transitional year for me, because it was in that show that I lost my best friend to AIDS, and, finally, and saw what AIDS was about, and learned of it. And it was also in that show I started writing. And when I decided I was no longer comfortable or content standing on a dime tap dancing. I was no longer interested in spending my life dancing for someone else. That I really wanted to do it my way, Frank. I wanted to do it my way, and I wanted to write, and I wanted to direct, and I wanted to produce. And all of those things happened from that time forward. I hit 30, I took a t total detour. I want to just write, direct, produce. But what I really took the detour to was, I got out here, having written, directed, and produced, and starring in a show, and I heard the science of mind spoken when I was, what were we, 31, 32 when we got out here, Kevin? The first time, 32 years old. And from that moment forward, my life just totally changed. I eventually wasn't even interested in writing, directing, singing, acting as much as I was interested in being a minister. And then I've hit 60 very shortly, and there's going to be a third act. I love that Jane Fonda coined this. Act one, act two, the third act of my life, which in numerical, in numbers, it would take me to 90. But I plan on being here well past 90. Yes? Yeah. Woo! Because in the front row, I have the beautiful, would you stand and let them all say, 98. Yeah. 98. That's what science of mind does. It cultivates your mind, and you say, here's what I decide. And I plan on living well into like 110, 115, as long as, as far and wide as it can possibly be. But up to 90 will be my third act, then I'm gonna relax a little, <laughs> rest a little bit. So, the epilogue, that's what I called it yesterday. That was so good. I said, that'll be my epilogue. So. Shakespeare's got five acts. I'm not doing five acts. <laughs> that would take me to 150 and I would look horrible. <laughs> well, maybe not, it's a decision, isn't it? Right. I I've already decided to look horrible, it's not happening. So, 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 so the question I have for you is, what do you want to do with your life? If you take away the but, what do you really want to do with your life? If there were no buts, no buts, what would you want to do with your life? If, you, if carte blanche, you can do anything you want, what do you want to do with your life? Because here's the thing, if you're willing to focus on that, really focus on that, only on that, not the buts. How many of you think you give equal time to the buts and to the wants? None of you are raising your hand. I don't believe you, but we do. I think we give equal time to the buts and to the wants. And when we don't, things happen. When we really focus on what we want. It's funny, Barbara and Gary are here today, and I said to Barbara when she came in, I'm seeing all these incredible things on Facebook that the two of them are doing together. And I know that's because they made a very smart decision. They said, I am gonna focus on this, right? Here's what we're gonna now focus on in our lives. And I can see, just by, just by reading Facebook, <laughs> that your life is just expanding, yes? It is. So I'm here today to ask you, what do you wanna focus on? And what are you willing to stop focusing on? Raymond Charles Barker says, the decision to let go of that which has completed its course in your experience is even more important than the decision to welcome new ideas. So what he's saying is the decision to let go of what no longer serves you, the decision to let go of it, by the way, let go of that relationship that no longer serves you. Let go of that friend that no longer serves you. Let go of that mindset about money that no longer serves you. Let go of your idea of health that no longer serves you. Even, even if you have amazing proof that these things exist. I had great proof that cancer existed and it no longer exists in my life because I would not give it the power 
that it demanded from me. And it demanded a lot from me. It really did. It demanded me to let go of my ego. I've gotten it back. It demanded me... <laughs> it demanded me to let go of, of, of a lot of stuff. <laughs> really, a lot of stuff. But you know what? Life's conditions can demand so much from you, but what are you going to demand of your mind? Because your mind is more powerful than any condition that could ever possibly challenge it. That's the truth. That is the spiritual truth of who and you what. You are, of who I am, of who everyone is. The decision to let go of that which has completed its course in our experience is even more important than the decision to welcome new ideas. And you know what else? You need to make the decision that this thing has completed its course of experience in your life. You just need to decide. You just need to decide and say, this no longer works for me. This no longer has play in my life. Don't engage. Don't engage in it. Raymond Charles Barker also said, the word no, I love this, the word no declared in mind eliminates all congestion. The word no. Have you ever found yourself thinking about something and just go, no! That was my impersonation of Betty Davis, apparently. No, no, to just say to yourself, no, I'm not thinking that. No, I will not, I will not live the results of that thinking. What if you really, every time you thought something, remembered you're about to live the results of what you just thought? <laughs> that would change a lot of our thinking, wouldn't it? And yet, that's the truth. If I think it, if I believe it, it's going to show up in some way, shape, or form. So, what do you need to say no to? I would like you to take a moment and think about that. What do you need to say no to? Really pull something up. I bet everybody has something they're ready to say no to. You have it? Everybody have it? You all have something that you want to say no to? Barbara, you have anything you want to say no to? You have something? Good. Do you have something you want to say no to? I know you do. 98, you're like, I have no no's left. Good. Okay, you ready? You all got it? Yep. I'm going to count to three, and you're going to say no. Let's see how you eradicate these things. Ready? One, two, three. No! That was beautifully articulate. Now let's let it out. Really let it out. One, two, three. No! Now one more time just for yourself. One, two, three. No! See how short that was? When it's just for you, it's just like, no! <laughs> Good, okay. Now, once you really eliminate the no, you can now focus your intention on what you want, which brings me to the next question. I want you to listen to this question. Is what you want equal to who you are? Is what you want equal to who you are? We talk a lot about being equal to what we want. I'd like to turn this around today. Is what you want equal to who you are? Yesterday, Al Alan Marcy took Kevin and I to Sunnylands. How many of you know what Sunnylands is? Sunnylands is this amazing retreat in the desert. Uh, it was built by Leonor and Walter Annenberg. It's, they call it a West Coast Camp David where global leaders meet to advance international agreement. And, re and uh, retreats from all over the world happen on this amazing estate. It, it was beyond anything I have ever walked through or, or, or had a tour of. The home is 32,000 square feet. 32,000 feet of mid-century modern house. It is spectacular. President Obama was just there. The National Institute of Health had a research uh, retreat there to further the movement of the HIV and uh, had great success. President Obama met President Abdul II of Jordan here. Also, he met with the President of the People's Republic of China, Xi, I'm gonna say this right, Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping, something like that. <laughs> so, you're in these rooms and, you're, and you're, you're taken through these rooms and here's the room that the Reagans slept in. Here's the room that the Clintons stayed in. Here's where Frank Sinatra was married. Was that was right, right in front of that fireplace, right? One of his marriages right there. <laughs> the reason why I bring this up is because there were these two women, um, 
two women that were on the tour with us. And I kept listening to their conversations. In every room we walked in, they'd be like, oh yeah, this looks just like my room. Yeah, in your dreams. And this was a running dialogue throughout. Not a bad thing. It was cute. It was sweet. They were having a really good time. And then we got to one room and one of them said, oh my goodness, I have a chair just like that. And she said, and that's as far as you go with it. And I totally got what they were saying. I, I, I actually filled up because I stood on that grounds, in those grounds, and I thought to myself, I am equal to this. Where is my sunny lands? If I really am equal to this, where is it? Now, I have a gorgeous house in Studio City. I have a beautiful home. And we are looking for a beautiful home in Palm Desert and Palm Springs, and I know we will find it. And there was a moment I stood there thinking, is it important for every single person in the universe to have a $32,000 palatial estate with acres and acres of land? Is that important for every single person? No, it's not. But is every single person equal to it? Yes, they are. So I knew I wanted to come in here today and say to you, is what you want equal to who you are? If you know you are God, and I don't mean in, a, in, in an egotistical place of saying, oh, I'm God, nobody else is. I mean that everyone is, and that we are tapped into that power, then are my wants big enough for who I am? Walter Annenberg, at the age of 80, sold his business, Triangle Productions Incorporated, to Rupert Murdoch for $3.2 billion when he was 80. And by the time of his death at 94, he had given over $2 billion away. Just given it away. And I walked those grounds and I thought, how amazing would it be to be able to give $2 billion away? How amazing would it be to be so philanthropic that we could just give wherever it was needed? That's what I want. That is what I want my third act to look like. That I am so clear on who I am that that type of wealth and opulence is mine to give. Not to just receive and hold on to and live with, but to give. You know, Ernest Holmes once, when he pulled up in front of the Wilshire Ebell in a Cadillac, was admonished by one of his practitioners that he really shouldn't drive up to the Wilshire Ebell front door in such a beautiful car that it would make people feel bad. Clearly that practitioner hadn't really learned what he was teaching. And he said to them, he said, would you think they would do better if I drove up in a broken down car? The person who's teaching them who they are and what prosperity is? He said, not only am I parking my car here, I'm not, not only am I driving up here, I leave it here so they can see me get back in it at the end of the day. That's who you are. And you're not that just to get things. You're that because that's who you are. You are the opulence of the universe. So are your wants equal to who you are? So today, I really want to ask you to start thinking bigger. And to do that, you just have to decide to think bigger. You have to decide to have bigger dreams, bigger goals, bigger ideology, a bigger understanding of who you are. Decide to do it. It's not too late for any person in this room to pull out any dream they've ever had and make it happen. It just isn't. And if you think it is, then you've got a yeah but in your way. And it really is time to let go of those. You have to start by letting go of your yeah buts. We cannot let the world tell us what we can't do. We have to be telling ourselves who we are. And then we know what we can do. So when I was at Sunnylands yesterday, I didn't talk a lot. I was really caught in the, the energy of this entire space and walking through this amazing space. And I kind of did a walking meditation where I just decided to expand my awareness to equal where I was. And I had said the day before to my children, I said, but what do you think if I went into politics? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and my son, without missing a beat, I said, but what would you think if I went into politics? No. I said, I was like, why? He said, you're not angry enough. Oh. And then Nora, Nora, this is the yin and the yang of my family. Nora said, which is exactly why he should go into politics, <laughs> because he'll bring a peaceful energy to politics, to which Will said, and he'll get nothing done. 
So that one little, maybe I should go into politics, spurned this entire conversation behind me. I wasn't even there anymore. <laughs> They're just talking back and forth. But as I stood, and I said, I said, don't you think I could be the first gay president? And then my son said, you actually could. He said, you actually could if you started younger. <laughs> Because Kevin would be a great first gentleman. <laughs> There he is. He would decorate that White House in such a, wow, it would be amazing. But I have to tell you, there was a yeah but there involved because I bought into the, you're right, by the time I got into politics and if I really wanted to become a president, you know, it would take me such and such and such and such. And, and I stopped and I went, wait, do I want to be president of the United States? No. <laughs> Frankly, that's what's going to stop me more than the ability to do it. It's what do I think about it? And that's what I'm here today offering you, a chance to look at your lives and ask yourself this very important question, is what I want equal to who I am? Have I settled for a life that really doesn't equal who I am? Do I settle for certain things in life because I'm afraid I can't? Or because I'm living, listening to the yeah buts? You all know what a yeah but is, right? Yeah, but... You know, do you think, do you think you could make a million dollars this year? Well, yeah, but it's not going to happen. And what is the universal mind listening to when you speak? When your mind speaks, what's it listening to? I got to tell you, not the yeah, the but. Because the but seems to be more powerful than the yeah. There's a quote, put it on my tombstone. The but is more powerful than the yeah. And that's the truth. So again, today, as we go through the rest of this day, and as you go through the rest of this day, just ask yourself, and I don't care if you are 20, how old are you, Hannah, 20? 22 or 98, it just doesn't matter. We would tend to think at 22, she has so many options ahead of her. Oh my God, life's just, a no, at 98, you have so many options ahead of you. <laughs> right? Maybe. Are you single? Maybe. No, there you have it. Options, options, options. If anyone in this room thinks they have limited options, then you don't know who you are. If anyone in this room thinks you can't get what you want out of life, that you can't be who you want to be in this life, then you don't know who you are. That's the absolute truth. That's the only thing holding you back. The only thing that holds us back is some assessment of ourselves that is not equal to who we are. So to recap today, find out where you're saying but. And I, as an exercise, try getting rid of the word but. I mean, any of you try that? I catch myself saying but and going, no, and, and. Instead of but, put and. Yeah, and. Yeah, and. And then when you say and, you're not kind of, you don't feel like saying something negative. You kind of like and, and you look for a better way to understand it. So I'm going to invite you this week to really step into this concept. Are my wants equal to who I am? To really ask yourself, what do I want out of life? And don't make it conditional to what's going on in your life. What do I want out of life? As Patrick said, we are sitting on the most amazing gift. And it's called our individual minds. And it, that mind, that individual mind is connected to the universal mind. And why can you have anything you want? Because when mind hears truth, it must respond. I grew up Catholic. And the Catholic Church taught me that God is everywhere. And if God is everywhere, how dare I take myself out of that equation? And if God is in everything, how dare I take myself out of that equation? And if God is all-powerful, how dare I take myself out of that understanding? And if God is unlimited, how dare I take myself out of that understanding of God? And if God is all love, how dare I do anything other than love? And if God is all forgiving, how dare I do anything than to forgive everything? And how dare I forget who I am? Because the minute I do, life changes. And anything and everything is possible. Namaste. Namaste.